Jim is 62 now. He and his wife own a gymnastics studio. They train gymnasts. Jim was a gymnast, a very active athlete into his 60s. I was going down a hill on a bicycle and hit two large potholes and flipped off and broke my neck on a tree. Joe, 59, is a farrier. He shoes horses. Horses are his livelihood. Well, it started off with an injury while I was shoeing a horse. It jumped on top of me. She landed across my torso and hip. Tara is 42 years old. As a young woman, she was a professional dancer in India, a dance teacher, and ironically enough, is a licensed acupuncturist. Outside of my business, I would work until on Friday nights until about 10 o'clock and I was attacked outside of my place of work. Pushed down onto the concrete and the sidewalk and then the person have one vehicle, then drive away, but drive some over me. Cassidy is 16 now. She had a stroke in utero. Neither she nor her mother was expected to survive Cassidy's birth. And um, when I gave birth to her, they had to resuscitate and bring her back to life. And during that time is when she suffered her stroke. In the beginning, I was dubious. I was more than dubious. I was highly skeptical. An attorney friend in Las Cruces, New Mexico, had a letter hand delivered to my door. In it, he reminded me that he had multiple sclerosis and had to quit working in his 40s when he was my neighbor. He asked me if I would go to Albuquerque and meet two doctors of oriental medicine who had changed his life. Neuroacupuncture is a contemporary acupuncture technique integrating two systems, traditional Chinese medicine, needling technique, how to put needle in, integrating with West medicine knowledge of neurology. Basic what we do, we, when the body, the brain, internal cerebral cortex have problem, MS, stroke, Parkinson's, cerebral palsy, and their part of the brain get affected. And depend which area they're affected, they appear the symptoms. Each area run, they have projected area in the body's surface. Then we put the needles, stimulate this projection area of related whatever the disorders, they can regulate internal organs. So I went down there and there was an ambulance there and they were bringing him up on a stretcher and I uh, thought he appeared normal and then the other side of his head, when they turned him around, he looked like he hamburger was on his head. I spent uh, a week in the intensive care then. Uh, my face had 100 stitches. It was all the way down. It was split open all the way around and inside my mouth and fold it over with dirt and gravel in it. Jim, you're a quadriplegic now. You'll just have to get used to it. And then begin the process of emergency rooms and MRIs and x-rays and, and very disappointing to be told that even though they, they could do this surgery to relieve the pain, that there would be chance of pain related to the surgery. In fact, a very great chance, 70% chance. So I just thought, why would I do it? And I was a fracture on my skull where several parts of the brain lobes come together and I got the encephalomeningitis and I lost my sight, my ability to process sight, walk, talk, Eat, feed myself, etc. Uh, my recovery was pretty slow. Um, I wasn't able to work. Um, I had a stroke in utero, which um, caused me not to be able to use my right side. With 
my ear, my hearing, and my eyesight, and my right hand, and even my leg were affected by it, and my learning disability also. I had, I couldn't retain what I learned in school. I spoke, I did, it's just some of the words that I would say weren't the words I wanted to say at the time, and so it would, I would want to say it, but it just wouldn't come out of my mouth the way I wanted it to. I did not hang out with any of my friends. We had recess, and I wouldn't go play with them because I couldn't. Does it bother you that Western medicine does not readily accept oriental uh, medicine? Yes. It's rather curious that acupuncture seemed to have been more accepted than other forms of, of uh, what I would call quackery. Um, I think that was mistaken, though. There's now been well over 3,000 trials, and a handful of those have been quite good trials. And the, uh, the answer they come up with is that it doesn't work, or at least it doesn't work to any worthwhile extent. Uh, you have to really do trials in which you compare which you have three arms, there's an active treatment, there's a dummy treatment, and there's no treatment. And by comparing those, you can tell whether there's a placebo effect. Um, there's a good Nordic Cochrane collaboration study by Hrobjartsen and Goethe, which shows that over a wide range of conditions, there, there is a placebo effect, but it's a small one. And I, and I think the the outcome of that is that there's a growing perception that the placebo effect has been greatly exaggerated. It's a real phenomenon and quite an interesting one, but it's not very big. Our doctors have seen a few people with blunt force trauma uh, issues and stroke issues who have gone for several years with no improvement and then seem to improve once they start the neuroacupuncture? Well, publish the results, because I haven't seen anything in the least convincing. If, if they had any convincing evidence that there were more people recovering with so-called neuroacupuncture than, than without, then they should publish them. But they haven't, of course, because that evidence doesn't exist, presumably. So I'm a little stunned by some of that, because, of course, he's so articulate about his position, reminds me of my father, actually, and my cousins who are doctors. And what keeps popping into my head are the words, and yet, and yet, and yet. I think we really think about like Western medicine, Chinese medicine together, and uh, really benefit the people. I never against the West medicine. They do huge, big part, sure. for sure. However, this, what we do is a new contemporary acupuncture technique. So the very new is only 40 years of history compared to 3,000 years of acupuncture, regular acupuncture. We can just use a few needles, completely change people's life, and they're able to talk again, able to walk, and no more balance. It's new ideas, new knowledge for West medicine education profession. I was still dubious skeptical, but I thought as a courtesy, I would go and meet these two people. So you may wonder, why are we making this movie? There was the first day this started working when I came to Dr. House, and since my arms have, have complete control and movement, I still have to work on the hands a little bit, but, but we are getting there. Now let's see what I'm happens. I'll we'll let them come down and then back up. Well, they're going back From up. From no movement at all. I had a friend that suffers with MS who was already seeing Dr. Linda. And she shared this with me. And the results were beyond anything I could have dreamed of happening to come in one visit and lose all that pain that changed my whole life in an instant with the horse and then in an instant with this lady that is so wonderful. After my second set of treatments, I am not legally blind anymore. I can uh, read and 
everything without glasses. I can don't have any blind spots from the side. I can talk and write properly. I've regained a lot of my long-term memory as well as the ability, capacity to use my short-term memory in uh, less than 10 visits with Dr. Howe. The first time, it was the most dramatic change I think I've ever had while coming here. Um, I could, by the end of the first treatment, I could open a car door, pick up a pen and a cell phone, and it was, it was crazy. I didn't have peripheral vision, and I had full vision by the time I left. Hope is a trisomy 18 baby. She was not expected to survive the womb, was not expected to survive birth, was not expected to live out her first hour, first day, first month. Dr. Jason and I, we treat the children, the, all the t children, the disease, uh, all the time. But, you know, the treating the, uh, this baby who has a T18, and we have no experience, in honestly, and no clue to follow. The saw that the baby, the, the hope was, you know, um, depend on the three big machines in oxygen, the feeding tube, and also, you know, heart, the, the heart monitor, monitors. And uh, all the three, the big machine around the base, tiny, the small, the baby, the around her, I think she, um, she looked really, really was uh, very, very moved, and also hard to breathe. So since our last visit three weeks ago, Hope has, she's done a lot. She's eating by mouth at least twice a day. She is lifting, if she's on her belly, she's lifting her chest up from the shoulders and lifting her head up and turning and looking. She has laughed out loud, like a real, real laughing. She is completely off oxygen. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not good enough. You're gonna have the best <laughs> life you can possibly have. Don't let life be mean to you. Enjoy life to the fullest. This is Hope Elizabeth Harrison. That's my daughter, Rachel, my middle daughter. And this is another little miracle. Predictions for her, as many of you, stated about yourselves, we're dire. Die any day, die any day. But she passed her first birthday, which made her 10% of the 10% who survived birth. <laughs> She's a play with a crop She loves a crop <laughs> 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 So, you may wonder why are we making this movie, if I feel that way. The answer is, these two people changed my thinking. And, in fact, they've changed the world. Ah. <laughs>